Uh, my name is Dale Smith, and I'd like to welcome you on behalf of Bridge Training and Events to the launch of Bridge Talks. So I thank you all for coming, and I'll be very happy and grateful for your feedback at the end. Uh, so we're going to begin um, talking about creativity. So I wanted to do a little bit of warm-up of our mind before we move forward, and, and I'll introduce you to Simon, who is our guest speaker this evening. Um, a little bit around power of the employee in innovation. So who are the experts in our business? Question to you. Who are the true experts in our organizations? People in the front line doing the job? Definitely agree with that. You know, people in, who are doing the job every day doesn't always have to be just in the front line because for me, it's everybody. Everybody in the organization plays a part in innovation and creativity. But right from the shop floor, people doing the jobs every day, the ideas that they come up with and the new ways of working, all of that is what we call innovation. So I wanted this, before we begin to move into the creativity aspect, I just want to stretch our brains a little bit into what is true innovation? Where is it? How does it surround us? What is it responsible for? This here is what the brain looks like when it's creating a thought and an idea. It is one of the most fragile things that we can imagine ever creating to the brain, it's like a little flicker of light. Smaller than the smallest grain of sand, coming together as two things form to create a thought. And then through evolution, we begin to see more and more thoughts growing in our organization. And so that's what I want us to begin to think about, is what is the power of an idea, the power of thought, and who holds it in our organizations? Just to stretch our brains a little bit, uh, because I, when I began talking about innovation, probably about three or four months ago, I started looking at the world slightly differently. I started looking at everything around me, from chairs to microphones to walls to clothes, and, and really began to look at that everything began as an idea in somebody else's brain. There is nothing that you have in your life unless Earth has given it to us, that hasn't began as a flicker of light in somebody else's brain. And so how many flickers of light do we have going off every day around us? We focus so much on the things that we've lost in life, whether through war, famine, erosion. Most of the things we've lost never even got created, simply because somebody said it's not a good idea. Does anybody know who any of these people are? George Menstrel, Mary Anderson, Joseph Swan. Do you think they play a part in your, in your lives every day? George created Velcro. He was walking through a field one day, and one of those little burrs stuck on his trousers and on his dog when he was coming back from hunting. And because he was a scientist, he began looking at that and say, wow, these two things come together and create a stronger force. And from that, we now have Velcro. Windshield wipers. Mary, a woman of her time, <laughs> when many people said, Mary, go back to the house, she stepped out and said, I've got an idea. And at a time when it was probably even harder for it to get those ideas across, she had power enough to say, I know how something else could be done better. And I was quite interested by this one. Joseph Swan actually created the first light bulb. He was an Englishman dating back to the 1800s. Actually created the first one. It only lasted a few seconds but it actually was the starting of what we have now as the modern day light bulb. All of these began as an idea. And within our organizations, we need to begin to harness these ideas and look at where are the true experts sitting in the front line fighting new ways of working every day 
and using that power to create engagement. Does anybody know who this person is? I knew you would know that, Matthew. <laughs> I was saying earlier that if anybody was to get it, I know you would. Does anybody know what he's responsible for? Because one day I was standing at the base of the shard, and I was thinking about innovation. He's the creator and the architect of the shard. And as I stood there looking at this amazing building, I had to realize that that only began as an idea, as a flicker of light in somebody else's brain. We now have something like a shard. But he's an architect, and because he is an architect, he has the ability to create schematics and drawings and put his vision on paper and then into the reality. But we're all architects. Every person in an organization has a form of being an architect. We're just architects in different ways. We're either architects on a shop floor, we're architects as leaders, but we're all constantly reinventing. So before I keep talking, I want you to think about what are some of your shard moments? So you get a chance to meet everybody and I get some energy in the room before I continue. I'd like you to find somebody that's sitting near you that you don't already know and come up with some innovations that you think has changed our lives that we sometimes now just take for granted. Two of my favorite ones is the extendable dog lead. <clears throat> of course that's a good idea. And I just have to ask, does anybody here own an electric screwdriver? I can tell you right now, everybody who put their hand up is smiling. It's like we have a special club. Why would anybody ever use an ordinary screwdriver? And you could just go zzz, you're putting a flat pack test together in minutes versus hours. But the person who invented the, the screwdriver didn't say, or the electric screwdriver never said that they invented the screwdriver. They took an amazing idea and built on it. And that's really what we're looking at. So just have a quick meet with somebody in the room and find out one of the inventions in your life that you've been taking for granted up until now. <laughs> I'll just use it. I'm married, so I don't know what that means. Okay, may I get your attention? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Excellent. Show of hands, who has an invention they would like to share with us? Sandro? I'm just saying to Matthew, I still remember Steve Jobs putting this thing up in the air, the iPad. Yeah. And I was looking at it and thinking, what on earth is anyone going to do with that? I think now it's pushed it too far. And I'd love to understand the process that they used to get to this. But don't you remember making fun of them in Star Trek in the 70s? Not that you were... For my time. Yeah, for your time. <laughs> but I can remember looking at Star Trek when I was really young and thinking, that's just silly. Computers that you can touch and walk around with? That'll never happen. And somebody made it a reality. Excellent. Ian? I say anything. Who needs an iPad when you've got a ballpoint pen? <laughs> <laughs> we always need a ballpoint pen. Doesn't matter how good technology, but how we just take it for granted that someone thought that we need something to yeah. write with that doesn't run out for a long time. But the quill works. Uh, but that's, but, you know, it wasn't easy enough. That's right. It's building so, on an idea. It's building on an idea. And it's not just accepting that what we have currently is the best it's ever going to get. Because we could say, the quill works. Why do I ever need a pen? My PC works. Why would I ever need an iPad? But that's not about how we begin to harness this information. Um, because some things work great. But how we build on them and grow. Because that's really what we're talking about with innovation and creativity. It's not always creating something brand new. Sometimes it's taking an idea, either out of need or want, and making it better. I was just remembering something when you guys were chatting uh, about the extendable dog lead. I do read interesting books. Uh, um, but I was reading because they had an extendable dog lead that didn't retract. But the, the real true inventor that, that gets a claim for it actually made the retractable one. Because he had a dislocated shoulder, and when his dog ran, 
and it didn't retract, it dislocated his shoulder further. So he went away and said, well, this works, but how can I make it work better? And so therefore, sometimes things work great in our organizations. But by harnessing the power of innovation and creativity, that's how we create the next tomorrow. So any other innovations? Yes. Toothpick. Toothpick. Yeah, very simple. Perfect. I think we all now need to Google and research who created the toothpick. <laughs> I'm guessing that goes back a long way. Any, and one more? A yeah. selfie pole. Say that again? A selfie pole. A selfie pole, yes. They were on Groupon. <laughs> Groupon itself. A selfie pole, where you can put your, cat, your phone out and take a picture of yourself. Hey, it's selling. It's making money. It's not a bad idea. So that's about how we need to begin to go out to our population more. Employee engagement is also about engaging our people, respecting their ideas, taking their ideas forward, and beginning to listen to them because everybody is experts within our organization. And often we find new and creative ways of working. But what are the killers of this innovation? How do we kill innovation in our organization? Committees. <laughs> Committees. <laughs> Committees. People who don't like change. People who don't like change. And words and language. How do we respond when people come with come to us with that great idea? That one thing that they believe could make a difference. Because what true engagement is all about is respecting innovation, not stifling it. Creating a team that actually embraces change because they're part of it, not, not having change thrust upon them. But if people feel part of something, they actually join a movement. And that's really good what we talk about with engagement and what we're looking at with culture and, and movement. It's about how we take our people forward as one team, but using the power of innovation, the power of ideas, because the number of times I've been confronted with these kind of things in both myself and in others, I assume it won't work, so therefore I don't try. How often have you said that to yourself? Oh, don't worry. It's not, they're not going to be there. I don't need to, I don't need to try. It, I'm too busy. I'll have to wait till later. There are two voices that exist in our team. One exists in your head, and one exists and you're external, but they both speak the same language. Either, either the language of positivity and support, or the language of doubt. So when we actually begin to move forward with our innovation, it's how do we harness this power of our people? And that's really what we want to be looking at with the series that we're doing, uh, looking at various aspects of how we take change into our organization through experience, but also through openness. Because that's really what the power of innovation is all about. It's taking the energy that's already within our organizations and harnessing it differently. Respecting it, respecting talent. Not death by committee, but utilizing committees in order that we can actually get true movement into our businesses. Okay, so that's really all I'm gonna be talking about now. But that just gives a, a little bit of an eye opener and a brain teaser to think that everything begins as an idea. Nothing in our organization Nothing that you're currently wearing, that you have in your homes. And so take one moment and just look around this room for me. And look at as much detail as you can see in this room. There's nothing that you're currently looking at that didn't begin as an idea. And so that's really about how we need to learn to begin to listen to our employees, listen to ourselves and how we, we represent change. But there's nothing that exists that didn't once begin as that little flicker of light in somebody else's brain. And by using the power of positive language, we're able to begin to harness that. <laughs>